Welcome to the first lecture of three on altering product strength. So there's going to be three lectures. This is a pretty intense topic. We're going to be doing a lot of math, and in the beginning we're going to be doing a lot of algebra that's required when we need to know how to alter the concentration or alter the product strength of a of a either a a drug product or in all often case you'll see here in the beginning stock solutions and these are important stock solutions are what we use to then subsequently make different sorts of pharmaceutical preparations so some very important skills but kind of math intensive when we need to do all of these manipulations of concentrations so um, and for this first lecture we are going to focus on altering products product strength, and stock solutions. The, you'll see in the title then that we will eventually evolve into solving some of these problems using a, a mathematical term called allegation. But allegation is for part two. We are still here on part one. So if we look here, we are going to focus today on the dilution and concentration of solutions, and we'll apply it to stock solutions and, and some other examples with alcohols and acids and bases. But I need to make sure, as we'll talk about on the next slide, that you separate dilution and concentration and how that works from the idea of fortification. So fortification is different, and we'll do some questions about fortification as it relates to some solids and semi-solids. So with that as an introduction, let's just get started. And again, this is a very important slide to understand the differences in some of the formulas that we're going to be talking about in the later part of this lecture. So it's not complicated, and I'm try the pictures on the right-hand side are there to try to kind of illustrate the three situations we need to understand. So the first thing we're going to be doing when we talk about altering public, uh, product strength is let's make sure we understand concentration. We have done a lots of calculations that involve the term concentration. Concentration means a certain mass of a drug or a product over some volume. It corresponds to how much drug resides in what total volume. So in this whole lecture today, we're going to be messing around with concentration. Okay, So the first way we're going to mess with our concentration is by diluting it. or going through this con concept of dilution. What happens in dilution is we decrease the concentration of the drug. Okay, With that, you need to turn around and understand what that means is that the mass of the drug is unchanged. So when we think of concentration of the mass of the drug over the volume it's contained in, with dilution, the mass of the drug or the amount of drug doesn't change. What we are doing is increasing the volume of the diluent. And that's kind of well illustrated on the picture on the right. You can see the same little glob of drug, and that is supposed to be a glob of drug. Don't think of it as anything else. There's a certain amount of brown drug in a certain container. And you can see if we dilute it, the amount of that brown drug doesn't change, but the container and the amount of volume of fluid that that drug is contained has expanded. It has increased. Therefore, the concentration decreases because the numerator stays the same as far as the mass of drug, but the denominator, which represents the volume, has increased. And so that's what happens in dilution. There is a decrease in the concentration of the drug, but this is, gets to be important in a little bit, but the mass of the drug doesn't change. It's simply the volume it's contained in enlarges. Okay, that's dilution. The opposite of that is concentration, okay? Now, when we are actively concentrating a drug, what we are doing, this is important, is still not changing the mass of the drug. In the term, the, the way we are using the term concentration, we are specifically identifying concentration as maintaining the mass of the drug the same, but decreasing the volume that that mass is contained in. So it's the opposite of dilution. Okay, again, dilution, mass stays the same, but volume increases. For concentration, mass stays the same, but the volume decreases. The amount of diluent decreases. As a result, the concentration goes up, okay, whereas with dilution, the concentration goes down. You're thinking, oh, I know that. That's obvious and easy. Good. So far, so good. We need to, though, in both, okay, my last take-home point for this slide is both dilution and concentration processes, the mass of drug stays the same. We are only changing the volume that it resides in. Separate that in your mind from the term fortification. Fortification is a process that occurs when we don't change the volume, 
but we increase the mass of the drug. So as you can see in the picture here, we go from a, a beaker containing this little glob of brown drug to the same beaker with the same volume, but now there are three globs of drug. So what did we do? We didn't change the volume, but we added more mass of drug. Okay, that's the key idea here for fortification. Remember, fortification means the mass of drug increases. Therefore, concentration increases, but it doesn't increase because the volume changed. In this case, for fortification, the concentration increases because the mass of drug increases. And you're going to see here in our, form, in our calculations here in a little bit, one of the most important questions you can ask when setting up your calculations is, does the mass change in my situation? Am I adding more drug? Is the mass of drug changing or is it simply a change in the volume of the diluent, whether it's going up or down? Okay, so last summary, dilution and concentration are processes that do not alter the mass of a drug. Fortification, on the other hand, is a situation where you are adding to or increasing the mass of the drug. So with, that con with those concepts in mind, let's go ahead and start kind of with our first calculations. All right, so our first sets of questions are going to be involving dilution and concentration. And I'll just remind you, we are not going to deal with fortification yet. So ignore fortification, though it's not what we're doing. We're doing calculations that involve dilution and concentration. And to do these calculations, we're going to be setting up formulas and using essentially three different variables. So let's make sure you understand those variables. So the first variable will be a capital C. And we will have C stand for concentration of the drug. Okay. Now, the actual concentration expressed to you can be in a variety of different units, but we are talking about some mass of the drug over some volume. All right. So, for example, milligrams per milliliter is the units, some possible units of a concentration. C stands for concentration. Q. Now, the uh, letter capital Q is going to be our an abbreviation for the term quantity. Now, that's a little bit generic. Quantity could either mean the volume or the weight or mass of a solution. Okay. For all of these questions to begin with, we are going to be focusing on volume. We're going to be doing a lot of liquid calculations. So in that case, Q for quantity is synonymous with the volume of the solution. And that's why, for example, the units I give you for a quantity of solution could be obviously most often given in milliliters. So oftentimes, volume will be used in our formulas as an expression of the quantity of the solution used. Okay. Now, C and Q, those are the main variables. But the other important idea, a very important idea is to understand is M. Capital M stands for the mass. Okay. Well, it's not really a separate variable. Where you're going to see it, when we use M for mass, we're going to substitute in our previous two variables because it turns out that mass is equal to the concentration times the quantity. So M equals C times Q. So just use that as an example. Look at our sample units we've been using. So if we use concentration in the units of milligrams per milliliter, so C is some number in milligrams per mil, if we multiply that by its quantity or its volume in milliliters, milliliters cancels, and you would have the units of milligram. And again, and that's an expression of weight or mass. Okay? So C for concentration, Q for quantity, and M for mass. And remember, mass is equal to the C times the Q. Right? The only other thing to add to that is we're going to have a lot of situations where we have an initial situation. So that's where we're going to use the subscript for the example number one. So a C1 would be our initial concentration and a Q1 would be our initial quantity. Well, if we took C1 times Q1, that equals our M1 or our initial mass. All right. Oftentimes we'll set that formula up that way and set it equal to some altered situation. And this secondary situation would have a different concentration and or a different quantity. So we, that's where we might use the term C2 for this, this altered concentration and Q2 for the altered quantity. I'd still remind you, though, that a C2 times a Q2 still equals then an M2. So again, those are the way we're going to set these up. So I think that's enough explanation and you'll see that. Now, why are this? This is the key concept here. It's very important. For the calculations involving dilution and concentration, where I told you before, the mass is not changing when we dilute things or when we concentrate things. Mass doesn't change. Since mass doesn't change, we know that M1, the initial mass, 
is going to equal m2, the mass afterwards, because when we concentrate or dilute, that doesn't change. So let's substitute the actual C's and Q's for our masses. So by saying M1 equals M2, that's the same as saying that C1 times Q1, so the initial concentration times the initial quantity, is going to stay equal to the altered or secondary concentration times the secondary volume. So C1, Q1 equals C2, Q2 when you are doing dilution and concentration. That's very much not the case for fortification. That's why we'll come to a different set of formulas when we talk about fortification. But in all of our subsequent examples for now, when we do or when we're doing either dilution or concentration, it's going to be based off of the premise that you can add dilution, you can add diluent, you can change the quantities all you want, you can even change concentrations, but in the end, the overall mass between what you started with and what you ended with the mass doesn't change. So we can set up these proportions and be able to solve for various variables. So let's stop talking about it and let's go ahead and practice it. All right, so our first example, or our first question I should say, reads this. It says, how many milliliters of a 10% weight per volume stock solution of a substance are needed to prepare 120 milliliters of a solution containing 10 milligrams per milliliter? Okay, so this is a good example of a stock solution question where we have an initial stock solution at one concentration and we're trying to figure out how much of that, what volume of that would be needed to prepare a different situation. That is to end up with 120 milliliters of a different concentration. Okay, so we've got some C's and we got some Q's and we need to set up a relationship between them. So this is the format I really need you to try to practice writing these questions out and we need to start filling in our variables, our C's and Q's and M's. And it's very important to line them up the way that I did. So let's just look at the way I set this up. I started with C1 and I said C1, the very initial concentration I have, was equal to 10%. The question said, we're starting with a 10% weight per volume stock solution. So my C1 is 10%. Now my Q1 going from left to right, don't go down, go across here. So going left to right, my Q1, my initial volume or quantity, I don't know. It, that's what I'm trying to solve for. It wants to know how many milliliters of that stock solution to use. That's okay, stay calm. We just set Q1 equal to X. And we'll make sure we understand X is in the units of milliliter. So Q1 equals X milliliter. All right. Now, below that, before you solve for M, or don't worry about the M1 yet. Let's just put right directly below that so we can line these things up. So below C1, let's put our C2. So what in this question, what will the resulting or what is our desired final concentration to be? It says, of a stock solution containing 10 milligrams per milliliter. So C2 equals 10 milligrams per milliliter. Go on to Q2, so directly below Q1, we'll write Q2. And from the question, Q2 is equal to 120 milliliters. It says we want to prepare 120 milliliters. So Q2 is 100, 120 milliliters, okay? so. Now, before we solve for the mass and come up with our M1 and M2, we have to look at our C's and our look at our Q's. Before we move on to mass, we have to make sure we have them in the same units. So let's do the easy one first. Look at Q1, and we said X equals X milliliters, or Q1 equals X milliliters. Q2 equals 120 milliliters. The units for both of those var variables are milliliters, so that's great that we can work with that. The problem is, look over on the concentrations. Our C1 is equal to 10%. Our C2 is equal to 10 milligrams per milliliter. That doesn't work. We need both our concentrations expressed in the same units. So you could either change 10% into whatever the value is in milligrams per milliliter, or you could change the 10 milligrams per milliliter and express it as a percent. It doesn't matter which units you choose, but you have to have them in the same units, okay? So before we go on to mass, 
Well, what I chose to do is let's re let's alter the ten percent, and instead of expressing it as ten percent, let's express concentration one or C one in whatever value it is in the units of milligrams per milliliter, so that it matches C two. And that's the work I can show I show you right below the two two formula lines. So down below there, you can see I wrote ten percent, and I said, well, that's a weight per volume solution, so that's really means that's the same as meaning. 10 grams for every 100 milliliters, all right? So I have 10 grams per 100 milliliters. Okay, I'm almost there, but I need my concentration not in grams per milliliter, but in milligrams per milliliter. So let's, uh, let's convert the top unit of grams by multiplying that value by the fact that there's 1,000 milligrams per gram. That way the units of grams cancel, and that gives me milligrams per milliliter. So let's just do the math. I would take 10 divided by 100 times 1,000. You do that math and numerically you should get a value of 100 and the final units would be 100 milligrams per milliliter. Okay, so that's the C1 that I really want to use when I calculate my mass here in a minute. Okay, because that way I have my units both situations in milligram per milliliter. Now, now that I've confirmed that I have values in the same units for both C's and for both Q's, now I can calculate the mass for each situation. So going back above for the C1, Q1, now substituting my 100 milligrams per milliliter, M1 is going to equal C1 times Q1. So now that's equal to our 100 milligrams per milliliter times x milliliters. All right, we don't know what Q1 is, but we've got it expressed as x. And I kept my units there so that I can double check them here in a minute. Now let's do that for mass 2. Mass 2 is going to equal to C2, which was 10 milligrams per milliliter, times Q2, which was 120 milliliters. So you can see where I wrote that for uh, the M2. So we, before we go on, we've done a lot of work already, and we're almost done if you, in one sense. But before we go on, we need to double check that our mass 1 and mass 2 have the same units both for concentration and for volume. And if you look, the way that I've lined them up like that helps you visually ensure that you've got the units the same. So that as, when we go forward now, you'll see here in a little bit, we can eventually drop the units so that our math is much easier to perform. Okay, so that's kind of the end of the first part of this question. Now we've set up our variables. Now it's easy to solve because here we go. What did we know about this question? It's about dilution or concentration. We are not adding drug to this situation. We are simply taking a stock solution and basically adding some sort of volume to it, some sort of quantity. All right, so the mass is not changing. We are not adding drug or adding any mass of drug to the situation. Since that's the case, we can say that in that situation, M1 equals M2. The mass doesn't change from the initial setup to the final setup. And since they equal each other, and since we now can define M1 and M2 in terms of the C's and the Q's, let's just write M1 equal to M2 by saying that for the case for M1, that really is the same as the 100 milligrams per milliliter times X milliliter, and set that equal to M2, which was 10 milligrams per milliliter times 120 milliliters, okay? And I've left them set up so I can, can you see the C times the Q on the left? And can you see the C times the Q on the right? I highly recommend that you don't, do, don't do the math yet. Set up the equation first so that you can make sure I've got C's and Q's equal to C's and Q's, and my units are the same. Now it becomes an algebra formula, and, and this is where I'm trying to say, now that we can visually see that the units are the same, let's ignore the units until we solve for X, okay? So in this case, on the left-hand side, it would be 100 times X, so on the left we have 100X equal to 10 times 120, which is 1,200. Okay, so 100x equals 1,200. Let's just divide both sides by 100, and that would give us x on the left, and 1,200 divided by 100 is 12. And then at the end, we can add our units back in by just going back and looking above. What did we define Q as? As being x milliliters. So the units for x are milliliters. So our final number was 12, represents 12 milliliters. So that's a that we've answered this question. What we said is that if we take 12 milliliters of a 100 milligram per mil solution and dilute it up to 120 mil final volume, our resulting concentration 
would be 10 milligrams per mil. So we have essentially answered this question. Let's continue on to our next question, which is very similar and allow us to continue to hone our skills in setting up these equations. So this question reads, how many milliliters of a solution containing 0.275 milligrams of histamine phosphate per milliliter should be used in preparing 15 milliliters of a 1 to 10,000 weight per volume histamine phosphate solution? Okay. So... Again, even in your mind, let's separate the information. We want to know how many milliliters of a particular concentration, histamine phosphate, to use to make 15 milliliters of a different concentration, histamine phosphate solution. So we've got C's and Q's on both sides. So let's go ahead and set those up and define those. Let's start with the solution we initially were given, which was um, a, so many milliliters of a solution containing 0.275 milligrams of histamine per milliliter. So C1, let's set that equal to 0.275 milligrams per milliliter. That's what we were given for an initial concentration. But what we're trying to solve for is how many milliliters of that solution to use. So let's set our Q1 equal again to X milliliters. And again, the units of milliliters. So we don't know how many milliliters. We don't know the quantity for number one. But we know we want its concentration to be 0 0.275 milligrams per milliliter. Okay. Now let's set up the C2Q2. The solution we want in the end to prepare from this C1, Q1, is a solution that has a volume of 15 milliliters. So let's set Q2 equal to 15 milliliters with a concentration of, so let's set Q2 equal to 1 to 10,000 weight per volume. Okay. Well, let's now compare our C's. 1s and 2s, and our Q's 1 and 2. Well, let's do the easy one first again. Looking at Q1 and Q2, we can see Q1 is X in milliliters, and Q2 is 15 milliliters. So those two units are the same, so my quantities are okay. Let's go back to my concentrations. Now, there's a problem here, because my C1 is given in milligrams per milliliter, whereas my C2 is expressed as a ratio strength, that is 1 to 10,000. That's not going to fly. So let's convert one of those. Clearly, it would be, I think, way easier to convert C2 from this ratio strength into a concentration expressed as milligrams per milliliter. So let's do that. So I show you my work right below there. So I say that 1 to 10,000 weight per volume is the same as, or essentially is defined as, the units of weight per volume are grams per milliliter. And so a 1 to 10,000 weight per volume would be 1 gram over 1 I'm sorry, 10,000 milliliters. So a 1 to 10,000 ratio is 1 gram over 10,000 milliliters. Okay? We're almost there, but we not quite there because I want milligrams per milliliter, not grams per milliliter. So let's m convert our gram units by multiplying this by 1,000 milligrams over 1 gram so that the units of gram cancel. So if you take simply 1,000 and divide it by 10,000, your number, your numeric answer would be 0.1. And our units here at the end would be milligrams per milliliter. So now what we can say is that our C2 really is the same as 0 0.1 milligrams per milliliter. So using that information, let's go back and set up our mass. So M1 would be the C1 times Q1. So C1 was 0 0.275 milligrams per milliliter times Q1, which was X milliliters. And let's set up our mass too. So M2 was this new early calculated concentration for C2 was 0 0.1 milligrams per milliliter times its Q2, which was 15 milliliter. So my units line up and we're good. And before even going on, let's just compare the concentration. So what is the scenario here? Essentially, we're wanting to take a higher concentration solution the 0 0.275, and create a diluted solution that has a lower concentration of 0 0.1. So clearly this is a dilution question. And what did we say about dilution questions? The mass does not change. Therefore, we can set our M1 equal to our M2. So let's set the expression of 0 0.275 milligrams per mil times X milliliters and set that equal to 0.1 milligrams per mil times 15 milliliters. 
All right. So double check that our units match on both sides of the equal signs. They do. So let's drop the units and just solve the algebra. So 0 0.275 times x gives you 0 0.275x on the left. On the right, we have 0 0.1 times 15. That equals 1.5. So now let's solve for x by dividing both sides by 0 0.275. So on the left, I would just get x. And on the right, I'd have 1.5 divided by 0.275. And numerically, that equals 5.45. And since the units for x that we have up in our equation for Q1 was in milliliters, our final answer is 5.45 milliliters. And that's the answer to this question. And just to summarize, what we've learned is we need 5.45 milliliters of our initial concentration, the 0.275 milligrams per mil. If we have 5.45 milliliters of that, we can dilute that with, say, water, for example, to a total volume of 15 milliliters. And by doing that, our final concentration would be our 0 0.1 milligrams per mil. All right, well, let's keep going because I think I have lulled you into a false sense of security. I hope so because the first two calculations weren't too difficult once you get the idea of setting up the C's and the Q's and setting M1 equal to M2, solving the algebra. These are fairly straightforward to answer up until now. So let's set this up and I'll explain why. It says, this problem says, how many milliliters of a 16% weight per volume concentration of benzalkonium chloride should be used in preparing 300 milliliters of a stock solution such that 15 milliliters of this stock solution when diluted to one liter will yield a one to 5,000 concentration solution. Yeah. Okay, I warned you. This is complicated. This is essentially what we call a double dilution. We used to call them double Ds, but now that has kind of a bad connotation. So we'll stick with a double dilution. What's confusing is there are really three solutions in this one question. So the only way to attack it is by setting up what we know of one solution related to the second solution related to the final solution. So let me just show you what I get at here, okay? So we know some things and we don't know other things. So let's take an inventory of what we know. What the question says, how many milliliters of a 16% weight per volume concentration of benzalkonium chloride? Stop. So what I drew on the far left is a beaker, okay? And this is the beaker of my initial concentrated solution. So below that, I said, okay, this concentrated solution has a C1 of 16% weight per volume and a Q1 of, I have no idea. It's asking how many milliliters. So I just put question marks there. So that's what it said to begin with. What it's saying is how many milliliters of that solution do I put into a second beaker? So that's where the middle beaker is. And this middle beaker is this stock solution, okay? So I want to take some unknown milliliters from my initial concentrated solution, put it into this stock solution, and it says, should be used in preparing 300 milliliters of a stock solution. So I know my Q, and since this is a different solution, this is a different beaker, I'm now saying Q2 for the stock solution. The quantity for the stock solution is 300 milliliters. What I don't know is the concentration. I have no idea what the concentration of this stock solution will be, all right? But what I do know, though, is that whatever concentration it is, it has to be the right concentration so that if I take 15 milliliters out of that stock solution and put it into a third beaker, okay, this third beaker, and I do know something about this third beaker, this third beaker will have a total volume of a 1,000 I'm sorry, one liter, which is a thousand milliliters. It says stock solution diluted to one liter. So I know this now Q3, because this is my third beaker, this big one over here, it's going to have a thousand milliliters. And I know its concentration. I know its concentration in the end will be one to 5,000. And that implies again, a weight per volume concentration. So let's make sure we understand this. So what we have is an initial concentrated solution that has 16% and some unknown quantity, but I take some unknown amount of that solution, put it into another beaker, make sure it has a total volume of 300 mils, 
And whatever end of concentration that is, I'm going to take 15 milliliters out of there and put it into a beaker that will in the end have a C3 of 1 to 5,000 and a Q3 of 1,000 milliliters. Okay, so looking at all my C1, Q1, C2, Q2, and C3, Q3, I have some missing information. I have some information, but I'm missing Q1 and I'm missing C2. But that's really all I'm missing. So the trick to this under this, this, this double dilution here is to solve it, we have to work backwards. That's the trick. Because I have, what the only solution that I have complete information on is the final dilute solution. For this ultimate final dilute solution, I know it's going to have a concentration of 1 to 5,000 and a quantity of 1,000 milliliters. Okay, So I can use that information and actually work backwards to solve for the concentration of the stock solution because I know the quantity for the stock solution it's 300 mils what I don't know is its concentration so if you look at step one I have three out of four variables when I compare the dilute solution to the stock solution I have three out of the four so I'll be able to solve for a C2 using that information okay once I know C2 then look at step two then I can use the stock solution and compare that to the initial concentrated solution because at that point I will know both C2 and Q2 and I would know C1. So at that point when I get to step two, the only missing variable at that point would be quantity one. So again, I can set up these same proportions and solve for quantity one. So this is a two-step process starting at the end and working back to the beginning, if you will. Okay. So with that as a setup, let's go ahead and start the first part of this question. Okay, so let's complete step one. Again, where we start with the final dilute solution and work backwards to be able to calculate the concentration of our stock solution. All right, so the trick on this is, is we are going to set C2 times Q2 equal to C3 times Q3. Okay, remember we're starting at the end and then working back to the C1, Q1. Okay, so let's, it works the same way though. So let's set up our concentrations and quantities for number two and then number three, and then we'll solve from there. Okay, so let's start with C2. C2, which is the concentration of the stock solution, that's the one thing we don't know. So we have no idea what percent strength that is. Okay, so we're going to set X equal to what, some concentration as a percent weight per volume. Okay, so X equals percent weight per volume, concentration of C2, the stock solution. Okay, now this is where things make it a little bit confusing. The Q2 in this case refers to the quantity or the volume in this sense of that stock solution that we use to create the final dilution. Remember, the only source of drug in terms of mass for the final dilution comes from whatever volume of stock solution we used to dilute. And in this question, look on the lower right, I'll remind you, it says we're taking 15 milliliters of the stock solution and creating it such that the final dilution is 1,000 milliliters with 1 to 5,000. So keep in mind, the source of drug, of mass in this final solution came from 15 milliliters of the stock solution. Okay, I'll remind you, go back up there. C2, we said we don't know what the concentration of the stock solution is, so it's X percent, but Q2, we know, was 15 milliliters. All right, now let's go down to C3. C3, the concentration that we want in the final dilution would be a 1 to 5,000 weight per volume, and our quantity 3, Q3, we know to be 1,000 milliliters. So again, if we look at the quantity 2 and quantity 3, we know both of those values and both of those values are in milliliters. Great. Let's look at the concentrations. Once again here, we're, we have a problem with our units because the C2 we set as a percent, C3 is in a ratio strength. And again, you could convert either way. Certainly most people would rather deal with percents. So let's convert our 1 to 5,000 weight per volume into an expression as a percent weight per volume. Okay, so I show you that work down below. One to 5,000 is the same as one gram over a 5,000 milliliters. And in this case, I could, you could solve this either way. I set up as a proportion. So one gram over 5,000 mils would be equal to some X grams over 100 mils. I'm just setting up a proportion. So if I solve for X there and essentially take one times 100 and then divide by 1,000, you would get 0 0.02. 
So essentially, 1 to 5,000 is the same as 0 0.02 to 100. Okay. And since we've standardized that now as per 100, that amount, 0 0.02 grams, is the same as 0.02%. So all I've done is take 1 to 5,000, set 1 gram over 5,000, and proportion that to essentially saying that's the same as 0 0.02 grams over 100 mils, which is the same as 0.02%. So now, I, and when we go forward, I'm going to say that C3 is equal to 0.02%. Now we can set up our M's, our masses. So M1 is going to equal to our X percent times 15 milliliters, where our M2 is now equal to the 0.02 percent times 1,000 milliliters. All right? And since this is a dilution, since we're only adding fluid, we're not adding any additional drug from our initial concentration, this is a dilution. So mass of 2 equals the mass of 3. That's the premise we can use. So let's set our mass one, I'm sorry, mass two, which was X percent times 15 mils equal to our mass three, which was the 0.02% times the thousand milliliters. So a quick inspection tells us that our units are the same. So now we can drop them and just solve. So X times 15 is 15 X on the left. On the right hand side, we have 0 0.02 times 1,000, so that equals 20. So 15x equals 20, let's divide both sides by x, and we see that x equals 1.3. And let's look back up, we said that the units of x in their C2 was as a percent. So we x equals 1.3%. So at this point, what we've done is we have finished solving for C2. We know that the concentration of the stock solution now needs to be 1.3%. And we know that because if we use a 1.3% concentrated solution and we take 15 mils of that concentration and then dilute it further to 1,000 milliliters, the resulting concentration would be 0.02%, and that's what we have formulated this from. So we now can go forward and go back now and continue on with step two. So step two is to go backwards now, even further, because now we know about our stock solution. So looking on the lower right, we just solved in step one to determine that the concentration of the stock solution we need is 1.3%. Okay. We also know from the beginning that we're going to have a total of 300 milliliters of that constant of that quantity. So the quantity of stock solution will be 300. Now we know its concentration is 1.3%. Now, what we're trying to find here is essentially how many milliliters do we need to add from our initial concentrated solution, which we were told would have a 16% weight per volume concentration. So now we have enough information to go ahead and solve for this situation. So let's set up our C's and our Q's. And we'll start with this initial concentrated solution that we're actually trying to solve for. We know it's going to have a 16% weight per volume concentration. That's what we were told we want to have, that we have to start with. So C1 equals 16%. Q1 equals X because that's what we, the whole point of this is to solve for how many milliliters of that concentrated solution to use. So we'll set X milliliters equal to Q1. Okay. Let's look at Q2. I'm sorry, C2. And we now know that the C2 for our stock solution, the stock solution concentration is 1.3%, and that our quantity 2, the amount of stock solution that we'll have, is 300 milliliters. So at this point, if we check all our units, we can see both C's are in percents, weight per volume, and both Q's are in milliliters. So for once, we don't have to change any concentrations. So let's just set up our M's. M1 for the mass of the initial concentration solution is going to be 16% times X, whereas our M2 is going to be 1.3% times its quantity, which was 300 milliliters. Okay, and once again, we can kind of see that this is uh, a dilution situation going from 16% down to 1.3%. So in a dilution, the mass doesn't change. So we can set our two masses equal to each other. So we can say that 16% times X milliliters is equal to 1.3% times 300 milliliters. 
So now our units are the same. We can drop them and just solve math. 16 times x is 16x on the left. And that's equal to 1.3 times 300 on the right. So that math would be 390. So divide both sides by 16, and we'd have x on the left equal to 390 divided by 16, which is 24.4. And the final answer, uh, the units for that, x was in milliliters. So our final answer is that Q1, the initial volume of our co highly 16% concentrated solution that we have to have, is 24.4 milliliters. That's the volume then we would use to create our stock solution. So we would take 24.4 milliliters of our 16% concentrated solution, put that into a total volume of 300 mils. By taking the 24.4 milliliters of my 16% and diluting it to 300 mils, my resulting concentration is 1.3%. And that's the percent concentration we said that if we took 15 milliliters of that and diluted it to 1,000, we would get 0.02%. So you can see this is kind of a serial or a double dilution situation. And it was a very complicated question. And we solved it, though, by setting up each beaker that we were going to make and defining the C's and the Q's for each situation and then looking and starting from the end and solving backwards. So that's kind of the summary of how you handle this sort of situation with the double dilutions. Okay, if you've been having fun up to this point because you love algebra, oh, you're going to enjoy this problem too. So let's just read it and it, it's a little bit of a twist on what we're doing. It's not a double dilution, so stay calm there, but it's got its own little problems. So let's just do it. It says, if a 0.068% weight per volume concentration of methylbenzothonium chloride lotion, say that twice, is diluted with an equal volume of water, what will the percentage strength of weight per volume of the final dilution? Okay. Oh, what did that say? Okay, so we have a certain concentration of this methylbenzothonium chloride lotion. Okay, lotion has this concentration. And whatever amount of it we have, we're going to essentially double the volume because it says dilute that lotion with an equal volume of water. That's kind of an idea here. What does an equal volume of water mean? Equal to what? Equal to the starting volume. So we have a certain concentration and a certain volume. Let's double the volume. Adding an equal volume of water essentially doubles the volume. And therefore it asks, what will the percentage strength and weight per volume be after the dilution? All right. Well, let's set this up. This is just a dilution. We can solve it the same way we've done everything up to this point. Let's set up our C's and our Q's. All right. So what are we starting with? We are starting with a lotion that has a concentration of 0.068%. All right, easy enough. What quantity of that do we have? Oh, wait a minute, where did it say that? It never told us that. Oh, this is crazy because it says we have this concentration and we're adding water, but it didn't tell me what we started with. So uh, I'm getting kind of scared here. No, calm. We don't know. Whatever we don't know, we'll assign to a variable. We don't know it, so X. X milliliters equals the quantity of our initial lotion. Okay, I feel better now. I know its concentration is 0.068%, and the amount that I have to start with is X milliliters. I don't know it. So let's go on to the final situation. What will the resulting concentration be? I don't know that either. It says, what will the percent be? I don't know it. I can't use X because I've already used X. What comes after X? Y. Okay, we're going to set that the concentration, too, is some Y meaning unknown, but different variable, Y percent. And we can assign it to percent. Okay? I'm freaking out, but wait a minute. Q2. What do I know about Q2? It's double what I had to begin with. But if I don't know what I have to begin with, how can I handle it? Well, how did we describe what we had to begin with? We didn't know it, but we called it X. And if Q2 is having twice as much as what I started with, then Q2 means having 2X. This is the key thing to this question. So the quantity, this is all a question about quantities. You need to be able to read that question, remain calm, and set up your variables, all right? Since it didn't tell us what our initial volume was, we set it equal to X for Q1.
What we know about Q2 is we know a relational volume. We still don't know what it is, but we know it's twice of what we started with. Since we started with x, Q2 therefore is equal to 2x. All right. Well, let's double check my units. I have percents for both of my concentrations, and I have milliliters for both of my quantities. So let's go ahead and set up my mass. My mass 1 is going to be 0.068% times x milliliters. My M2 is going to be some y percent times 2x in milliliters. All right. And again, since this is a dilution, the mass doesn't change. I can set M1 equal to M2. So 0.068% times x is equal to y percent times 2x. Okay. And we have milliliters and percent, so my units are the same. So I can drop my units now. And what I basically have on the left is 0.068x equal to 2xy. So on the right-hand side, let's divide out the 2x from the right. So basically, I combine this step down here. But hopefully, you can see visually that solving for y is equal to my 0.068x on top divided by the 2x. And the 2x came from the quantity on the y side. So now you're thinking, how do I solve this? Well, I have an x on top. And I have an x on the bottom. So the two x's divide out each other. So really, 0.068x divided by 2x is the same as 0.068 divided by 2. Well, that's just a number. I can solve for that. So 0.068 divided by 2 essentially equals 0.034%. And that's y. And that's the answer to the question because y was equal to the concentration that results when we essentially double the volume starting with an initial concentration. Okay. Now I know some of you are thinking, oh, why did we even have to do all that work? Because if you have 0.068% and you double the volume but don't change the numerator, then it, clearly your fraction is going to divide in half. And if that's intuitive to you that you could have just seen from the beginning that 0.68%, if you double the volume without changing the mass, will have the concentration. See that our result, our 0.034% is exactly half of our initial concentration. That's great. However, you don't, what this makes me feel good about is I don't have to rely on intuition. Sometimes my intuition lets me down. But my algebra skills will never abandon me. So even if your intuition leaves you, always fall back on your algebra as we were able to do in this question and to be able to spend some time but be able to still determine the correct final answer. One last question about dilution and concentration. That is the situation where the mass doesn't change and yet you're altering the final volume. So one last example of that. And uh, so let's read the question. It says, how many milliliters of a 95% weight per weight concentration of sulfuric acid having a specific gravity of 1.82 should be used in preparing one liter of a 15% weight per volume acid. Okay. This is a similar situation. We've got a high strength sulfuric acid that we want to dilute down. So it's exactly the same as everything else we've been having to do. Except there's hopefully you'll see something here in a minute. So let's just set it up. No questions yet. Let's do our C's and our Q's. So our first concentration, our initial solution that we're using is a 95% Oh, what did it say? Weight per weight. So be careful here. Our, but no, everything's okay. It just says it's 95% weight per weight. Okay? Our quantity of that that we're going to use is what's unknown. It's what we are solving for. So let's set Q1 equal to X milliliters. All right? C2, what do we want to make, is a solution that has a concentration of 15% weight per volume. Okay, that's different, but we'll come back to that. 15% weight per volume, but we know we want a final quantity of a th one liter. And one liter, just to make things easier, since our units will match, let's say one liter is the same as a thousand milliliters. So I'm going to say my Q2 equals 1,000 milliliters. And so the crux of this problem comes down to concentration. Let's look at Q's real quick though. Quantities, we have the same units of milliliters, X milliliters for Q1 and 1,000 milliliters for Q2. So we'll set that aside. 
The problem is the concentrations because C1 is equal to 95% concentration weight per weight, whereas C2 is a 15% concentration weight per volume. How could I possibly convert between the weight of something to a corresponding volume or a volume to a corresponding weight? You would use the specific gravity. Okay, so what we need to do is either convert the 95% weight per weight to a weight per volume, or we can convert the 15% weight per volume into a weight per weight. Okay, so we could solve this either way. So what I chose to do is simply to convert the C2 15% weight per volume, and let's express that concentration as a weight per weight concentration. So it matches our C1 concentration. So simply to do that, I re-express the 15% weight per volume as 15 grams per 100 milliliters, and I multiply that by the specific gravity expressed as one milliliter over 1.82 grams. That way the units of milliliters cancel and the units of grams cancel, so we'll get a percent. Since I want it as a percent, let's not divide by the 100. Let's leave the 100. So truly the math is simply the 15 divided by 1.82. That value is 8.24. And if we don't divide by the 100, we have 8.24 over 100, which is 8.24% weight per weight. So really, I've ex re-expressed C2 instead of saying 15% weight per volume for the sulfuric acid having a specific gravity of 1.82. That 15% weight per volume is the same as 8.24% weight per weight. And that's the uh, percentage I'll use in my mass calculation so that it matches. So now, let's re-express our mass. Mass 1 is going to be the 95% weight per weight times x milliliters. Mass 2 is going to be this new matching concentration of 8.24% weight per weight times its value quantity Q2, which was 1,000 milliliters. Okay, so we have, we double check our percents and our milliliters, the units are the same. So once again, since this is a dilution question, we can say that mass one equals mass two, which means that 95% times X milliliters equals 8.24% times 1,000 milliliters. So solving for X on the left, we have 95X equals 8,240, divide both sides by 95, and we see that X, our final value for X would equal 86.7 and the values would be milliliters. Okay, so that's the volume of the initial 95% of the sulfuric acid we would need to dilute to a liter to end up with a final concentration of 15% weight per volume. And that ends this question and our last example that we'll be going through in this lecture of dilution. So we're ready for our last topic in this lecture, which is to discuss the concept of fortification and distinguish it from the previous examples we've done with dilution. So again, with dilution, we said the mass doesn't change when we add additional volume. What's very different now for fortification here is, and again, I'll still say that all of my abbreviations for M1 and, and C1 and Q1 and all those letters are the same. So using the same abbreviations, let's discuss the concept of fortification. And it's simply this. When you fortify something, you take an initial concentration and quantity and you add to it, you add additional mass. So you don't just change the volume, you change both the volume and the, the amount, the concentration, you add additional mass. So in the past where we've said mass one is equal to mass two when you dilute something, that's not the case for fortification. So in the middle here you can see what we're talking about with fortification is taking an initial mass, adding some an additional mass to it to get a new third mass. So again, the mass one, M1, is equal to what you have to begin with. M2 is the additional mass you add to it by fortifying it, and that's going to equal some final M3, which is simply the combination of the M1 and the M2. Okay, so just because M1 plus M2 equals M3 is not enough letters, remember, we will always actually, instead of using M's, we will substitute for the concentration times the quantity, the CQ value for that. So in the end, key concept at the bottom for fortification. You're going to take your C1 times Q1. You're going to add to it C2 times Q2. And that combination is going to equal some 
third quantity three or C3 times Q3. So some initial M1 is plus an M2 is equal to an M3. That's what happens during fortification. And again, it's a very important distinction between dilution where we said M1 equals M2. That's not the case for fortification. Here, M1 plus M2 is what equals an M3. So having said that, let's just use an example to illustrate this. The problem says, if a pharmacist intended to fortify 10 grams of a 0.1% weight per weight tacrolimus ointment, which has the brand name Protopic. So if we want to fortify that ointment by adding 2.5 grams of ointment containing 0.03% weight per weight of the same drug, what would the percentage strength in weight per weight be of this final combined mixture? Okay. Start with, and I'll show you some pictures down here below. So what we do is we start with essentially 10 grams of that 0.1% ointment, and we add to it essentially 12.5 grams of the 0.03% ointment. So at this point, before we do any numbers, do you understand this is for fundamentally different than dilution? If we would just have taken the initial protopic ointment at 0.1% and added just some inert diluent, that would be dilution. But we're not. We're not adding diluent to the initial 10 grams. We are adding both grams of drug and altering the final grams of the product. So let's just set up our formulas. And maybe that'll make more sense than what this, that description did. All right, stay calm. Let's do our C's and Q's. What did we start with? We are starting with an initial concentration, C1, of 0.1% weight per weight. We said the quantity of that ointment that we have, Q1, is equal to 10 grams. All right. C2 is equal to what we're adding to the C1. So the concentration of the second ointment that we're adding to it is 0.03% weight per weight. And we know we are adding a quantity to of 12.5 grams of that. Okay. So, so far, hopefully it's okay. C1 and Q1 was our initial ointment at 0.1% and 10 grams. We're adding to that an additional 0.03% that has 12.5 grams, and that will equal a C3 of, we don't know, what will the final concentration be? So let's set that equal to X, some unknown percent, X percent for the concentration. Bear with me though, Q3. We know what it is because mass doesn't appear from, quantity doesn't appear from anywhere. We started with 10 grams. We're adding to it 12.5 grams, so clearly the final quantity will be the sum of both, 10 grams plus 12.5 grams. So clearly if you do that math quickly, you means Q3 is 22.5 grams. Hopefully you understood that. That's a key concept. The quantities are additive, so we can actually predict, therefore, what the quantity of the Q3 will be because it'll be the sum of the Q1 plus the Q2, all right? Well, let's set up our mass equations. Now, because we have all of our concentrations are in percents, all of our quantities are in grams, so we can set up our masses and say that M1, therefore, is equal to 0.1% times 10 grams. Our mass 2 is 0.03% times the 12.5 grams. And our M3, our resulting, will be some X percent times 22.5 grams. All right, so we have one variable in all of our three mass equations. So let's set up the fact that this is a fortification. And in fortification, we know that M1 plus M2 is what equals M3. So we know we can set that up as 0.1% times 10 grams plus 0.03% times 12.5 grams is equal to X times 22.5 grams. So this is where, double check that our units are the same, and if they are, then drop the units or you'll mess up the math. So essentially, let's just take 0 0.1 times 10. That equals one. So we have one plus 0 0.03 times 12.5 equals 0 0.375, and that is equal to 22.5 times X. So going back to the left-hand side, if we just do that addition, then we have 1.375 on the left equal to 
x on the right. So now we just solve for x by taking the 1.375 and dividing by 22.5. And if you do that, you numerically get the value of 0 0.06. And the units of x were as a percent. So our final value for x is 0.06%. And that's the concentration that results when you combine the two different concentrations of protropic together. And that's the final answer to this question. One last example, so let's just do it and be done. How many grams of zinc oxide should be added to 3,200 grams of a 5% weight per weight zinc oxide ointment to prepare an ointment containing 20% weight per weight of zinc oxide? Okay, so again, this is a fortification because we want to add pure zinc oxide okay, to a pre-existing concentration of an ointment and to get a final more concentrated ointment, okay? So this may be just a little more challenging in the sense that we're adding pure drug. And so how would we express that? We stay calm, it's easy. The pure drug that we're adding has a concentration of 100%. So we're gonna say that C1 for our zinc oxide powder is 100% Weight per weight to zinc oxide. It's pure zinc oxide. It's zinc oxide powder. Okay? So 100% weight per weight is C1. We do not know how many grams of this powder to add. So let's set our Q1 equal to X grams. So far so good. So some unknown amount of this pure zinc oxide powder is going to be added to. So our C2 is our initial ointment that has a concentration of 5% weight per weight and a quantity of 3,200 grams. Easy. Now, what is our final resulting product going to be? We know we want the final product to have a concentration of 20%. So our C3 will be 20%. Okay, so we have all three of our concentrations. The only trick to this is, what will our Q3 be? What will our final quantity be? I know my the ointment I'm starting with is 3,200 grams. And I know I said that I'm going to add to it some X no x gram of powders. So what will the final be? Well, it's just going to be the sum of both of those. So our Q3 is essentially equal to 3,200 grams plus x grams. We, while we don't know what it is exactly, we can express it in the same way that with the same variables we have above. So our quantity three is 3,200 plus x grams. Now we can just set up our mass our mass amounts for each of the three situations. So mass one is 100% times X. Mass two is 5% times 3,200 grams. And mass three will be 20% times 3,200 plus X. Okay, so since this is again a fortification situation where we're adding drug, let's set M1 equal, well say, say M1 plus M2 is what equals M3. So M1, the 100% times X grams, plus 5% times 3,200 grams is equal to 20% times the quantity of 3,200 plus X. Okay, all of our units match, so let's disregard the units and do our careful algebra. This may stretch a little bit of algebra, algebra for some of you, so hopefully we can do this. What we have with 100 times X is 100 X. Add to that, 5 times 3,200 gives you a large number, but it's 16,000. So 100x plus 16,000 equals. Let's take the 20 and multiply each part of the expression at a time. So 20 times 3,200 is 64,000. Plus 20 times x is 20x. So doing that math, we can see on that second line here, make sure you're comfortable on doing this, solving the M1 plus M2 equals M3 gets boiled down to 100X plus 16,000 equal to 64,000 plus 20X. Now you can solve this however you want. I think it's easier. Let's do, let's subtract 20X from both sides. So if we subtract 20X, what we have on the left is 80X. So 100X minus 20 is 80x. Okay. Now that we subtracted that, let's go ahead and subtract 16,000 from both sides. So if I subtract 16,000 from the left, the 16,000 disappears. And on the right, I have to take 64,000 minus 16,000. And that gives me 48,000. 
So in one step, I've gotten rid of the 20x on the right and the 16,000 on the left. So in the end, that leaves me 80x equal to 48,000. Take 48,000, divide it by 80. So if we divide both sides by 80, then 80 cancels, and we'll have just x. So x would equal 48,000 divided by 80, and that is 600. And looking back up, we can see that x was in the units of grams. So I have just solved for the amount of additional zinc oxide powder to add, which is 600 grams. So 600 grams added to the 3,200 grams of a 5% ointment, you mix all that together, and that essentially gives you a final concentration of 20% and a final total quantity of 3,800. The 3,200 plus 600 is 3,800. And so that ends this question, and it ends this lecture. And I, I do apologize. I do make some assumptions that some fundamental algebra skills that you have are certainly required for answering these questions, but certainly setting them up. The take-home messages are the difference between dilution and concentration and fortification is the mass equations. For dilution and concentration, M1 equals M2. For fortification, it's M1 plus M2 equals M3. And being able to know that mass is equal to C times Q, and then using algebra skills, you can solve all of these questions. And so I hope this was helpful.